Good morning. Is God willing to impact the lives of this whole nation of people? Let's look today at our reading, Jeremiah 25, verses 8 to 11. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, because you have not heard my words, behold, I will send and take all the families of the north, says the Lord, and Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and will bring them against this land, against its inhabitants, and against these nations all around, and will utterly destroy them and make them an astonishment, a hissing, and perpetual desolations. Moreover, I will take from them the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness and the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride and the sound of the millstones and the light of the lamp. And this whole land shall be a desolation and an astonishment. And these nations shall serve the king of Babylon 70 years. So, until God pronounces a prophetic time frame, there's always a possibility that he'll change direction, that there will be a an adjustment in what he wants to do. But once he's given a time frame, a time prophecy, it becomes locked in. Once sent to the prophet, most of these prophecies are irrevocable. They are unadjustable. They're just settled. This is the way it's going to be. And yet it's true that the threatenings and the promises of God are both conditional in many cases. So there's two kinds of prophecy, really. There are the kinds that are definite and irrevocable, and there are the kinds that are conditional. There are times and things that are locked in, you know, Jesus, the, the seed of the woman is going to come and, and he's going to have this war with the serpent. That's, that's irrevocable. Some of these things are locked in in a most definite way, but other things could have been changed up to a point. The river of time keeps moving and God interacts and he intervenes and he works to help his people come back. So now this is the pronouncement of judgment we've been coming to. Here it is. We're there. Every life is about to change. The nation's going to be plundered, wrecked, smashed. Nothing's going to be the same. The rest of their lives, these people are going to be dramatically impacted by this act of judgment that didn't have to be this way. But here it is. And listen to this. Does God say why? Does he say why? Yes, he does. Again, we're looking at verse 8, where the answer is given. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, because you have not heard my words. There it is. That's the answer. Why this judgment? Because you, you people of mine, you claim to be mine, you have not heard my words. And now they're going to learn what their rebellion means. You know what? What about you and I? You and I, like the Hebrews, we need a lesson in listening to God. From Genesis to Revelation, he's, he's spoken to us, but a lot of people scoff at God. They're not listening at all. People are indifferent. They, they leave the written word of God out of their life. It's like walking by a chest of, of gold and just ignoring it and moving on. God is giving us, God has given us enormous ancient wisdom and help so that we can live really fulfilled lives. But the people, they pursue their own plans, their own desires. At this point, many even think that there is no moral baseline. They think that they live in this moralityless world generated amazingly by, by, by mindless, impersonal nature. We've all grown up on this on this myth, this ungodly myth. And you know what? People can all think whatever they like, but the Creator's going to come and mess us up. He's going to come and show us who's in charge. He's not trying to be a hard person, but it's we who are deluded, thinking we can sort of generate our own world, create our own uh, space here. No, this is God's planet. He has made us. We are designed by Him. And so many of our friends and neighbors and even our family have embarked on an impossible plan to kind of remake the world in their own image. And there's a lot of hard crashes that happen trying to do that. But God loves us and he sent his grace out in search of us in hopes he can bring some of us back. And I guess it's just a simple truth that humans are hard to work with. That means it's time to pray. Dear Father in heaven, I guess we could admit, Lord, we are hard to work with. You, we know you love us. We know you sent Jesus. We know that all heaven has been tuning in on this for a long time, and we have been a difficult group, and yet you, you're still searching for us. You're still reaching for our hearts. Help us to be right. Help us to come to your throne. Lord, help us to be ready to return to you. Bless us and use us, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, maybe we should ask ourselves if we're hard for God to work with and change. God be with you today in all that you do.